Hi everybody! I'm doing a 30 minute session for a client. And this is a Joe and Abby session, which means I'm going to share 30 minutes of energy work and wisdom. And then Joe is going to share 30 minutes of energy work and wisdom. And we're going to work on the exact same goals. So I'm going to go ahead and read the goals to you and then I'll start to uh, start my experience, okay? And if you're interested in checking out Joe's psychic experience, I'll put a link in the description. So. All right, I'm going to go ahead and read the goals and then get started here. Okay, my goal is to receive wisdom and or healing around a work anxiety. I'm typically a confident person in a management career that I enjoy, but when I travel, I usually get very anxious leaving my family, and I get physical symptoms that affect my GI system in particular, like feeling nauseous around food. Hmm. I also get worked up over due dates because I am great with people and problem solving, but bad with paperwork. <laughs> All right. Let me just a moment here. I'm just absorbing in these goals. Okay. All right, I'm going to relax now and get tuned in, and we'll see what the, the wisdom is. And the, I'm definitely going to share some healing here, too. Okay. See what spirit has to say. All right, it's a long time. That's what I feel. And I'm standing, and there's sort of a line drawn in black sand. And I'm looking a very far way, but it's almost like um, what I could see in the distance is no different than what I see before myself. It's all dark. Black sand and dark air is what it's like. It's just blackness. And the feeling of a very long time. There's no ability to separate from this. It's just going to have to be just like this. That's what the energy is like. So I stand here, because what else is there to do? All I can do is simply stand here. And nobody is going to come to help me. This is hard. My mind wanders, is actually reminiscing in some thoughts or memories. And I'm male and I feel alone, but I'm not disappointed in that. I'm okay being alone. But I do long for change. I do long for something new to take place here. I actually am pulling out a cell phone in this <laughs> in this scene and I'm searching and looking for something, some kind of information. It's all very a spiritual universe, so it's quite interesting to see this sort of spirit body um, stuck in this sort of vast world of dark and black. And it's been a very long time, but voila, here's my cell phone. <laughs> so it's just like uh, rum rummaging through whatever this is. Looking for something that cannot be found. That is the experience. Searching for something, looking for something. And getting nowhere. Hence, a very long time. And the longing for something new to take place, not able to access it. This is getting interesting. So this male is actually a reflection of yourself. And you're in the center of what is uh, quite an interesting uh, geometric shape, but it's multiple, multiple shapes. It's interdimensional shapes put together. There's opportunities, but none of them are actually calling to you. That's very strange to me because 
for someone who is longing for change and yet there's opportunities here that is now being experienced it's like these opportunities aren't what I'm looking for so I'd rather stay in this place than explore something new that isn't exactly what I'm looking for again searching looking trying to find something that cannot be found even if some options are presented And now, again, a very long time is being experienced. Something is about to change. All right, the energy is getting really, really thick. And I mean thick. And it's hard to breathe through it, to be honest. It's really, th it's like stuck in my throat. It's hard to talk through it. It's in my heart. It's in my lungs. It's in my stomach. It's in my mind, and it's asking so much of me. And I'm being drawn towards what is like a train station, and I feel like I weigh a thousand pounds. And I try to get on the train, but I'm not allowed. Again, I feel stuck unable to be truly set free another missed opportunity <sighs> an opportunity that wasn't <sighs> what I wanted it or needed it to be things are getting very very tight right now <sighs> and there's anger and there's hurt in this and again, it's getting stuck in the throat and it's getting very, very tight. It's getting very tight in the lungs, in the throat, the heart, the stomach, and then it creates a bit of a dizziness in the mind. And I say, where are you trying to go? And I hear the words somewhere. And I say to this man, did you know about this anxiety, this part of your own soul that has the freedom to travel but is full of anxiety that is affecting even the ability, the digestive system, making it very hard. And you're just in nowhere, kind of wanting something but rejecting. And it's a long time. What is the correlation between you and her? He remembers now. It's all, it's all like he remembers. It's on a cell phone. He says, that's it, that's it. This is making me feel sad in my, my eyes and my face. And uh, he has a cell phone out and he pulls up a photo. And he starts to reminisce in this and it makes him feel very sad inside. It's about loss. He says there's some things I just don't know how to cope with. Maybe it's easier to stay here than to face this hard stuff. Sometimes it's just too hard. He's starting to turn into a woman. This is getting very uncomfortable, okay? Very, very overwhelming. It's like very stuck energy, very stuck energy. So when you're in an opportunity for travel, it's like um, it's uh, tripping you over certain experiences from other times and places, okay? And it's like these experiences have been bottling up, piling, and then kind of getting tighter. And uh, so now you have this big jumble of response to it. That's not necessarily you in this lifetime. It's other yous, okay, that are trying to reconcile, that cannot reconcile, therefore they need you to have this experience in order to help these other parts of your own soul. Okay, now I'm looking at this woman and she's quite beautifully dressed. 
She's gazing out a very gorgeous window and it's rounded at the top. And it's raining outside. And she's looking at a round uh, pocket watch at time. And she cannot leave. She cannot go anywhere. Time just passes and she's basically like a doll in a dollhouse. She cannot leave. This is like a, an imprisonment. Yes, it's gorgeous in here. Beautiful dress, beautiful hair, beautiful place to live. <laughs> but there's no ability to leave this place. To go anywhere. She's constantly looking at time. And she's watching her life fade away. I'm stopping this moment and I'm asking her, why are you stuck in this house? Why don't you just leave? She feels a responsibility or a duty to her role here. It's not for her to leave. Because I send her images of just run away. <laughs> you don't have to be a doll in a dollhouse. You can leave at any time. Even if you're going to be poor on the street, it would be different. Now maybe that, that's not what you want to experience. But she says, my role is here. My duty is here. I belong here. My identity, my place, my being is here. Everything is getting extremely tight again and overwhelming and it's starting to get jarred up in my throat. <sighs> this, there is something quite scary um, that's developing and it keeps showing me it in her mind and it's like black bats that screech and there's lots of them. And she just keeps saying, I'm not allowed to leave. I'm not allowed to go. And she keeps looking at time. It's starting to turn into a horrible, like, nightmare movie. Like, um, you're repeating the same moments and it's getting really overwhelming. And nothing changes. She keeps staying the same. We're starting to return to the man with the cell phone. And I say, why is this memory so difficult for you? He says, there's a lot more that you aren't seeing. A lot more that you don't know about. It's a disappointment and it's hard on his heart. It's hard to make out or translate what his explanation is. It just seems to be a weird relationship with the other family members. I don't know if she's been deemed to have some kind of psychological disorder or if she sort of, um, I'm not sure why it feels like she's being sort of imprisoned in her own room even. Man, it keeps showing me time and the sound of clocks and the time just keeps ticking and ticking away. I'm going to change the scene. So I take a big sledgehammer to the window and I grow some wings here and I pick her up and I fly her out of that room. And I fly her out into the sky. Let's see what happens. And uh, the man with the cell phone says that you can't, you can't just leave something that is incomplete. What is incomplete has to be completed. It has to come full circle. So even if you try to leave, you're only creating the illusion. You actually have not completed that cycle. It has to be completed. 
therefore I must stay. They say, you're going to have to show me a lot more. I'm still not convinced that there isn't an alternate way here, that we can't alter the energy patterns associated with this memory, that we can change things. He's showing me another scene. This one makes me want to cry too. And I hear those words like, it's not fair, and it's really loud. <sighs> And it's a tragedy. It's a really awful tragedy. There's a lots of these. Um, one of them is a, what appears to be a healthy newborn baby that dies Ugh, without a real explanation. That's so confusing. That is so confusing. <sighs> Another one is... This one is really hard too. There's a woman and she is pacing back and forth and there's the experience of a loud tornado and a swirling wind and destruction. And she's, uh, it's like again time is ticking away and there's quite an anxiety inside of her heart and the feeling of concern for someone she loves that isn't in a safe place and it's really overwhelming and so scary and time and worry and time and worry this is really really putting pressure on this development of experiences <sighs> this feels like um, quite a like a, a weather related event <sighs> where somebody that you could define as family they're simply showing me as somebody you love and is very close to your heart is not in at the house is not in a safe place and it's like um, a burden of loss that you carry that you blame yourself for it <sighs> because this loved one doesn't ever come home <sighs> and the feeling of time passing And the hope that maybe, even years later, and we return to the woman that's imprisoned, and it's like the Palais de Versailles. Like, it's like a seriously gorgeous place. And this is getting quite creepy because uh, she's perfect. Like she's dressed perfectly, her hair is perfect, everything about her is just perfect. Like a perfectly created doll. And her eyes are pure black. Like there's no whites, it's just all black. And she's just looking at me. It's blacker than black, I mean it's creepier than that. It's like she has no eyelids, like her eyes are even extraordinarily large and black looking at me in a very creepy way. And I take my hand and I place it within her heart. And I hear in her mind the sound of the clock again ticking. This is taking me back to the train station. This is another really, really hard one. My spirit guides are just, they're just, we're going to slow things down a little bit. In this scene, I start to feel like a very well-to-do woman at a train station, and there's lots of people here. I have an important responsibility. I have an important um, place to go. And a girl comes up to me. She has a, she has a 
brown eyes, she has curly brown hair. And she's uh, kind of tugging on my dress and she looks scared in her eyes, so she's asking me for help. She's sort of drawn to me as somebody who can help her. And she's lost. I actually take some time to talk to her for a little bit. I ask her some really warm questions. Like, um, oh, what are you doing here? What, are you traveling somewhere? What's your mom and dad like? Do you have any brothers and sisters? The time is running out. I, ju I can't uh, continue to help this girl because I, I have to catch this train. I, I literally have no choice. I have got to catch this train and I, there's something about time here running out. But I have to go. I have to go. There's no uh, feeling inside me that there's a lot of pressure or responsibility that I get on the train. It's my responsibility. And I have to leave this girl. I don't reconcile her problem. But I feel like I do did my due diligence. I did what I could do in the time that I had. And I get on the train. And I feel that that is what I needed to do, was to get on the train. And I had to sort of trust that whatever comes next to her for her is her experience. They're showing me time passing now and that girl's eyes and her hair and her face in that moment are tugging on my dress. I'm not able to ever leave that moment. And I'm left for years and years and years wondering what happened to that girl and wondering if I really did need to go. Maybe I could have stayed. And I start to feel a great disappointment in myself that I didn't stay to help her. I mean, this lingers. This is a real memory. This is you. All the way up till the time that you're, you're, you know, getting, you're kind of nearing death, okay? That girl's face is still in your memories. And you left her behind. That you could have helped her. And you didn't. And that poor girl. Whatever became of her, I don't know. Why didn't I stay? I should have stayed. The reality is, in that moment, and this is quite loud energetically, she was pressed to make a very swift decision. And she did everything she could in the time that she had, and she felt very um, like her responsibility was to leave. So she did what she felt was the right thing to do. What's interesting about this memory was there was no right or wrong choice. Your soul chose to have an experience that would perplex you, that would challenge you and challenge your ability to make a choice that would not ha be a right or wrong choice, but to see how you would um, continue in the life based on what you would decide to do. That is still very loud in your soul. That is an unreconciled soul memory. And I mean, it's so loud that you have begged the universe to give you a second chance, to let you live that lifetime over again, to let you come back, and that this time you really want to stay with her. 
you'll find a, another way to get home that you just want to go back and try this again and that the right choice was to stay but the universe is not going to allow you to have that second chance because the point of the lesson was to forgive yourself it was to have that experience and then just to simply forgive yourself for whatever you decided so you made the choice and you decide later that it was a wrong choice and now you have to live with it and you live with it all the way to the grave feeling a disappointment in yourself and when all you needed to do was forgive yourself you made a choice that you felt was the right choice at the time and you need to acknowledge that was then the right choice at the time and that's all there is to it and move on there's another lifetime here. It's the second. This is also very, very sensitive. Do you see now um, what we got going on here with like the layers and then the pressure? <laughs> so your inspiration to um, travel is interconnected with these unreconciled lives. <sighs> and it's all kind of coming and collecting in here with the heart with the stomach there's a lot of reaction and it's actually a good thing the reason why it's a good thing is because this is a sign this is a message from your soul that is saying i want to reconcile some old stuff and it, it's this that is triggering it it's this traveling that is triggering this old stuff and it's actually creating a pathway and access to healing your own soul and setting the soul fragments free which is helping you to feel brighter because you've moved on from those lives that you're still connected to so if you're still connected to them you're still living them <laughs> you're still living in those lives even though you aren't you are because your consciousness has a unreconciled energy debt okay it's all deep stuff and it's all now rising to the surface and it's ready to be looked at evaluated so that your soul can finally heal and move on now this next one is um, a very interesting place it's very beautiful but it's it's a different it's um, it's a warm climate and it's I mean it, I'm not convinced this is Egypt but it's got like um, kind of a surreal structure to the building um, kind of reminds me of something Egyptian it could be it's a palace of some kind it seems like there's a deserty type um, feel to the climate and it's hot and dry I don't I'm not convinced that it's Egypt though it seems it, it might be it's somewhere else but it seems to be and maybe in that region but there are what could be defined as ten men okay and they're all uh, connected to each other there's like a rope that is connecting um they're they're bound to each other okay and they're all slaves they all have this sort of like um white cloth <laughs> and it's like literally around their <laughs> So it's like underwear. It's like real like underwear, but it's like a cloth that's like wrapped around. <laughs> and that's what they got going on there. And they're bound to each other. And you're one of these men. Now this is really, really hard. I don't know, I don't really understand the reasoning or the meaning behind it, but there's a female that is being brought in here that you're familiar with, okay? And this is, you don't say anything. You don't react at all with your face or your eyes. You stand very still without any reaction. And she's screaming and crying and very afraid. <sighs> this is really, really hard. <sighs> There's a spear at her heart. And I'm experiencing um, what is the connection between you and her. 
and the spear that is about to pierce your heart and the knowing within yourself that this one that you love is about to die in a very terrible way and that there's nothing you can do about it. You literally can do nothing about it. And when that spear pierces your heart, it's like you also die inside. You remain that way. You remain like a dead inside. <sighs> Any type of a fight or passion or that you had, it's just totally broken. You don't have any fight or you just, it's like, um, you don't care anymore. There's a certain, um, life force energy that doesn't exist within you now. So you just are going to go through the routine of what is the rest of your life. And you carry a feeling of being partially dead. I will say that talking about these lifetimes is opening your heart up and I mean it feels like air, it feels like breath and your ears are circulating and there's energy kind of flowing in and out of your ears too and around your sort of third eye in your mind, okay? And there's actually energies being sort of sent down through this torso and the hips and the legs and into the earth. And some energies are being sort of released out into the sky. This is a, a new part, okay? Very important. The scene is different. The men are still here. Everything still appears to be the same. But the energy feels like it went from a human reality to some alternate dimension of hell. So it feels like you are now in hell. Okay, literally, like in an energy version of hell. But you, you don't care. You don't react to it. You don't even have fear of it. And I see what is a quite a large black dragon appearing here. Very menacing, very intimidating. With fire just constantly just breathing out. Not as if he's trying to burn anything down, it just comes out, it just breathes out. And there's some intensity in these eyes. And it's turning into a, a place that is on fire. But you just sort of do what you will, <laughs> dragon. Eat me alive, burn me alive, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What's interesting about this lifetime, just give me a minute here, there's a big energy shift going on. It's like a peace, a peacefulness. This is really important. I'm going to first tell you about this life and the meaning of this dragon. It's about how every event that takes place has a secret gift in it. And that enduring the, the experience of watching this one that you love being pierced in the heart and experiencing your own self die, you don't fear anything anymore. You actually, it literally is like an upgrade out of what is a, a normal human response. You just don't feel fear at all. Zero fear. So through a traumatizing event, your soul gets to experience what is not being afraid of anything, not being afraid of death, not being afraid of being tortured, not being afraid of anything. And because you know what it feels like to even feel such an extreme loss inside yourself that there isn't fear anymore. Do you understand? It's, it's like a good, it's, it's like a bad thing, right? But there's something quite extraordinary about it.
And the power of these lessons to forgive yourself, right? The woman pacing. <sighs> the woman that had to get on the train. This, this about time is interesting and feeling like you're kind of imprisoned in this relationship of time that never ends. And what is your true purpose? If you are simply a doll in a, in a gorgeous palace that cannot leave, what then is your purpose? It's interesting because you were exploring what your purpose could be here and finding a purpose for yourself in this experience. So it wasn't for me to take you out of that experience to change the energy. Your soul made a choice to accept the life as it was and to look for some type of purpose with it. Now why is it getting creepier, right? Let's see if we can explore something more about that. Ah. It's no different than being actually locked in a real prison. You're going to go through psychological changes um, where at first you can cope with it, but then you can lose your mind from it. You can become psychologically sick, but then you can also conquer that. You can grow in extraordinary ways when you are put in extreme experiences that will break you down. And finding a way to conquer being broken down in order to rise above it and then to see through a new pair of eyes. So it's they're showing me that this experience has a breaking points to it. But she she never gave up on an acceptance of of this. They aren't explaining to me why she wasn't allowed to leave, but she it's like um embracing being a house cat or something but it does feel dismal it doesn't feel like a celebration but it does feel like a duty and an acceptance of an experience and choosing to take responsibility and and uh, like and hold yourself up high with pride that you will um, accept your place and accept this life. That is very interesting. Something is cracking and breaking in this, this space with a man with a cell phone. And it's like the, the geometric shapes with the different opportunities. But it's like this whole place is breaking apart. It's all breaking apart and busting up. It's like all this dense energy that is in kind of um, holding you um, back from feeling a freedom to travel um, and a, an ability to move, you know, to be away from your family, to trust that everything's going to be okay. You're forgiving parts of your soul for times that it wasn't okay and other experiences that are kind of um, circulating around this issue. It's very interesting. You are getting extremely relaxed here. Nothing that we had seen at the beginning exists anymore because it's all been set free. And now that it's all been set free, it doesn't exist. So now we're working with entirely new energy. But I do feel what is a reconciliation within your own soul. And it's, a, it's like a circulation of light, but it's also a very healthy relationship with time, which is just a, a, like a readiness to meditate. Like the soul is meditating on these lives, but with a fresh pair of eyes and senses and ability to forgive and to move on, to let go to fully heal. It feels so bright. It feels so much better. You feel like a thousand 
10,000 pounds lighter. I mean, you feel crazy lighter, <laughs> like a mountain lighter. I mean, you feel like you could jump 10 feet in the air. I mean, just a moment here because everything's just moving about right now. Oh, really, really awesome. I feel like so good right now. I feel like I can breathe. I feel like I can stretch. I feel like I can go places. This is a really cool experience. I'm be curious to see what Joe uh, comes across. It's amazing how energy work can change your life. Some of the things that don't make sense that we're going through can have interconnected uh, relationships with other experiences that we have that we don't even remember. And working with... Uh, helping those soul fragments or those parts of your conscious that are get kind of stuck in those lives, helping them to kind of come full circle and to let go and move on is going to bring a lot of shift in your current life. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you for this really neat experience. Thank you so much for sharing as well. And for those of you out there, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with myself or psychic session with Joe and I, um, you can do so by visiting my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. I hope you all have a great day.